Hi everyone, in this video I am going to talk about a new type of a research study design um, which is called the retrospective prospective research study design. Now when can you describe your study as a retrospective prospective study? This is when you are reflecting on a past data, data that was collected in history and you are analyzing that data and then basing it on that data you carry out an intervention and then study the impact of the intervention on a group and study the impact of it. So if this is not clear to you let me explain it more simply. So basically in this type of a study design you don't create a control group. So normally in research study what do we do? We have a control group, we design an intervention and then we study the impact of the intervention on the control group and see what happens to it after which either it becomes a treatment group or an experimental group. Now in a retrospective prospective study you don't have a control group. You assume that the data collected in the past is what is true and you base your intervention on that past study. You design an intervention and study the effect of the intervention on a group and that becomes the treatment group or the experimental group. Let me give you an example in case you are not understanding this. So let's say that in the past you have studied that during Christmas the number of road accidents uh, go up in percentage. Let's say that the number of road accidents uh, go up in percentage by 15% or 20% during Christmas. That is what is being found by you uh, based on the study of the past data, the historical data, the data studied in retrospective and that is why the design study is called retrospective prospective. Now you have studied that, you have based that as your control group. Now what you do is with the new group, uh, you start conducting random breath experiments or random breath analyzers. You start testing for alcohol and their effects, uh, carry out random breath testing on people who are driving vehicles during Christmas and you find that that brings down the percentage of accident by say 5 or 10 percent. So there is no control group, you didn't have a control group, what you studied was past historical data, you carried out an intervention by doing random breath testing and you studied the impact of the random breath testing on the people who were subjected to the random breath testing and you found that the percentage of accidents actually go down. Or another example could be that you found out that in the first month of the year, in January, the productivity of the employees are historically seen to have been very low. That was past data. Now you assume that is the right data, that is correct and you design an intervention where you come up with some incentives. So you could come up with a bonus in the month of January that people returning to work in the month of January um, will get a certain bonus or they get an opportunity to travel somewhere for work or they get an opportunity to um, um, earn extra hours for leave um, and you study the impact of this intervention on the productivity of the employees and you find that it has either gone up or gone down but you study the impact of the intervention on that all right um, or you feel or you have found out that uh, children who have not been uh, given either maternal care or child health care have high mortality rates. So infants who are born but were not subjected to a maternal care or child health care were found uh, to be a dying and that is the historical data and then you design an intervention where all the infants born are subjected to maternal care or child health care and you find that the mortality rate has dropped. So there are more survivors. It could be in the same country. Uh, it could be in the same hospital, uh, in the same location, so or it could be um, somewhere else. But you, uh, uh, you study the past data, you design intervention and make sure that you study the impact of the intervention on a new population. So you don't necessarily need a control group. So I hope these different examples help you to understand when can you describe your study as a retrospective prospective study. Um, thank you for watching today's video. I hope this video helped. Let me know if I missed something. Like, share, comment, subscribe and put your comments in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with my next video.